Real deal, lean and mean, cock locked and ready to rock. Rough, tough, and hard to bluff. I take it slow, I go with the flow, I ride with the tide, I get blind in my stride. Driving and moving, sailing and spinning, jiving and grooving, wailing and winning. I don't snooze, so I don't lose. I keep the pedal to the metal and the rubber on the road. I party hardy, and lunchtime is crunch time. I'm hanging in, there ain't no doubt, and I'm hanging tough, over and out. It's all part of the plan. You've been warned, dude. Strong am I with the force. When Christianity was itself a movement of revolt, it attempted to suck the whole of demonic brutality into the body of the Redeemer, and build thereby a vision overcoming entirely the madness of violence by inverting its charge, that is, from the state of perennial war to the king carried out experiments where scientists used technology to transmit phrases into the heads of human subjects. How? By burying subliminal messages in microwaves and beaming them into a person's head. It seems like a weapon torn from the pages of a comic book. The Air Force denies it's working on one. But patent number 6470214, issued on October 22, 2002, says otherwise. The patent title, Method and Device for Implementing the Radio Frequency Hearing Effect. Patent holder, the U.S. Air Force. Documents surrounding the development of this secret weapon are classified. But what is known is that microwaves carry energy. When a microwave pulse is absorbed by our body, this energy is converted to heat, causing the tissue to expand slightly and then contract when it cools. If the microwave were aimed at our head, this expansion and contraction would be heard as a clicking sound that could be encoded into words. And these electrical signals that we recorded from will travel through these cables. She managed to tap the vision from the brain of a cat and to reconstruct what the cat sees onto a computer screen. So this is a digitized movie. Um, this particular movie is a short clip from Indiana Jones, I think. Here we see the two images next to each other. On the left, the image that was shown to the cat. At the right, the image that is tapped out of the cat's brain. The picture has a lot of random flickering, the noise. Create some kind of a, a mental firewall to stop other people from uh, breaking inside our skulls. The day may be approaching when you can send someone a text message just by thinking about it via a chip implanted in your brain. It turns out we may not even need the chip. One company is already developing a portable technology that can intercept your thoughts without surgical implants. The audio is a small sensor that rests on the surface of the skin above the vocal cords and it captures the activity that's an instruction signal that the brain sends to the vocal cords that you do normally in order to speak. But in the case of the audio, um, the sensor is so sensitive that it doesn't require a person to actually speak in order to produce speech. Callahan designed a sensor that can read our brain signals. How? The brain is the master control center of speech. When we communicate, the brain tells the mouth what to say. So, speech is essentially thoughts sent to our vocal cords via nerve signals that are then converted to words. Since the audio is designed for people who've lost their ability to speak, it's worn around the neck and placed on the vocal cords where nerve endings emit the signals associated with speech. So for instance, when you think about saying orange, the brain sends the message to the larynx. Even though the larynx might be damaged or missing, the audio picks up that nerve pulse and a tiny computer translates that thought into the word orange. Nothing has to be implanted. The sensor merely has to be on the surface of the skin near the nerves. It's a huge breakthrough. The audio's remarkable ability to read thoughts has far-reaching implications. For a paralysis victim, it means telling their wheelchair where to go without ever uttering a sound. Callahan's assistant demonstrates. With the device strapped over his larynx and routed through a computer linked to the motor, he wills his wheelchair to move 
using just the electrical impulses from his brain. The way that this application works is the audio device is on Ethan's neck here, and it captures the activity that his brain senses his vocal cords. When he says commands or words like for... And all of your shoot, what, what do you think you're shooting? Whether you, you're, you're, whether this thing, excuse me, every once in a while, I forget who I'm talking to. But uh, I have no idea whether you're, you think you're taking or making a film about uh, Duke or Thompson. I haven't thought about it until now. And I'm filling with hate and rage right now just thinking about it. Go ahead. <laughs> That's you. You're passing it over to me again? Well, I mean, I, I want to drink some chlorophyll. And... So what? <laughs> oh, no, I think that's a serious point. I'm, not, I'm never sure which one people expect me to be. And very often, it, uh, they conflict. Most often, as a matter of fact, with, with people I don't know, I'm expected to be Duke more than uh, Thompson. Sure, because, I mean, I come to you only knowing you from your books and from your writing. But um, speaking very personally... Um... I, that's a very profoundly personal commentary on your perception. I if I were you, I'd flee after saying anything like that. Jesus. Foreigners. Speaking very personally. Um, it's, it's, I wouldn't risk that again. I, I actually find that you match pretty accurately up to the character that you've created in your books. I actually... That's twice. In two minutes. Okay, well... I mean, I have nothing to do with the hiring policies of the BBC. We're just about to run out of film, I think. <laughs> You're out again? God damn it. I've never seen such lame equipment. You know, I own a, you know, a ranch in Colorado, and I have a you know, wife and a child, and uh, peacocks and Dobermans, and... Uh, it seems... Yeah, I'm, 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 I am living a normal life. Being on this, right alongside me, this myth is growing and mushrooming and getting more and more warped, getting more and more warped. And uh... This zone is subject to thought. Now, since time doesn't record events uh, the way we do on calendars and clocks, you could only record an event by thinking of it. Now, theoretically, we believe we can take a videotape magnetic uh, camera into the time zone and photograph uh, Lincoln's Gettysburg Address or Caesar's Army's marching or anything that's ever happened. All right, let me get this straight. In other words, you're telling me like H.G. Wells imagined 50 years ago that everything that happened in time is still there to be seen by the recreation electronically of a thought which exists. Uh, Jack, uh, you know how you uh, talk into a tape on a tape recorder and play the interruptions back identical to the uh, play that you made. Uh, the Earth's magnetic field is uh, the same way. You can put interruptions into it and play them back out of it. An associate of ours in uh, creating a magnetic coupler with this principle. The biblical judgment of God aspect and what is God telling us through this? Who wants to volunteer? Don't just be sorry. Think for one fucking second. 